In this video I'm going to show you how to let go of heavy emotions, such as anger, guilt, and shame, using the best method. But first I want to share a vulnerable story of mine. I've always been a deeply spiritual person, seeking ways to connect with a higher power and find meaning in life. Back in 2015 I stumbled upon the work of David R. Hawkins, a spiritual teacher and author who wrote about the power of letting go. At first, I was skeptical. I'd always believed that to achieve my goals it took hard work and determination, and the idea of letting go seemed counterintuitive. But as I dove deeper into Hawkins' teachings, I began to see the value in surrendering control and trusting in the universe. I realized that I had been holding on to a lot of fear and anxiety, especially when it came to my career. So that's why I had five different businesses that I was doing half-ass, instead of just one business in which I'm serving my life purpose. I'd always been a high achiever and wanted to make a difference in the world, but I felt like I was spinning my wheels and not making progress in any of my businesses. In fact I kept getting worse and more roadblocks kept happening. Through Hawkins' teachings, I learned that my attachment to certain outcomes was actually blocking me from experiencing true success and fulfillment. I realized that I needed to let go of my fear of failure and trust that the universe had a bigger plan for my life. I practiced letting go on a daily basis. Whenever I felt anxious or uncertain, I would take a deep breath and surrender control. I focused on the present moment, rather than worrying about the future, and trusted that everything would work out as it was meant to. And be sure to watch this video until the end to see how my life changed as I learned how to let go. But first let's talk about how letting go can improve your mental health and I'll take you step by step to let go of things that are holding you back. Look letting go is an important process for improving your mental health and well-being. Dr. David Hawkins, a renowned psychiatrist and spiritual teacher, offers several methods for letting go, which I'll outline below. I acceptance, the first step towards letting go is accepting the situation or the person you're struggling with. Instead of fighting against it or trying to change them, Simply acknowledge that it exists and allow yourself to feel whatever emotions arise. Accepting someone or something can be challenging, but it's an important step towards finding peace and happiness in your life. Here are some steps that can help you learn how to accept someone or something. 1. Acknowledge your emotions. Accepting someone or something doesn't mean you have to like or agree with it. It's okay to feel angry, hurt, or frustrated about a situation. Acknowledge your emotions and allow yourself to feel them. For example, Ask yourself, where do I feel anger in my bod? Identify it. Then ask, what are the sensations I feel? Tightness pressure, heat, etc. 2. Practice empathy. Try to put yourself in the other person's shoes or understand the situation from a their perspective. This can help you develop empathy and compassion, which can make it easier to accept them. 3. Let go of control. Often, our inability to accept someone or something stems from our desire to control the situation. Recognize that you can't control everything and let go of the need to control the situation or the person. 4. Focus on the present moment. Sometimes, we get caught up in our thoughts and worries about the past or the future, which can make it difficult to accept the present. Practice mindfulness and focus on the present moment instead of dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. 4. Simply going inward and following your breath from the second it hits your nostrils and goes all the way down to your stomach, and then back out is one way to do it. 4 or using your five senses and just observing the things around you from a place of curiosity what do you see in front of you? What do you smell? What do you feel? What do you taste? 5. Find common ground, look for something positive or a shared interest that you can focus on. This can help you connect with the person or situation and find common ground. 6. Seek support, if you're struggling to accept someone or something, it can be helpful to talk to someone you trust or seek the help of a mental health professional. Remember, Accepting someone or something doesn't mean you're giving up on your values or beliefs. It simply means that you're acknowledging the situation and choosing to let go of the attachment to negative emotions and focus on finding peace and happiness in your life. If you're liking this video so far, be sure to let us know by pressing the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. 2. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a powerful tool for letting go of negative emotions and freeing yourself from resentment and anger. This doesn't mean you condone the behavior of the person who hurt you, but rather that you're choosing to release your negative emotions towards them. Forgiving someone who has hurt you can be a difficult and complex process, but it is ultimately a decision that can bring you peace and emotional healing. Here are some steps you can take to begin the process of forgiving someone who has hurt you. 1. Acknowledge your feelings. It's important to recognize and acknowledge the pain and hurt that you feel. Don't ignore or suppress your emotions. Take some time to understand why you're feeling the way you do. 2. 
communicate with the person, if possible, it may be helpful to talk to the person who hurt you. Let them know how their actions affected you and express your feelings. This can help both of you to gain a better understanding of the situation and may help to clear the air. 3. Choose to forgive. Forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. It's important to make a conscious decision to forgive the person who hurt you, even if you don't feel like it. This may take time, so be patient with yourself. 4. Practice empathy, try to see the situation from the other person's point of view. This doesn't mean excusing their behavior, but it can help you to understand their motivations and reasons for their actions. 5. Let go of anger and resentment, holding on to anger and resentment can keep you stuck in the past and prevent you from moving forward. Try to let go of these negative emotions and focus on positive ones instead. 6. Focus on healing. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or condoning the hurtful behavior. It means letting go of the negative emotions associated with the experience and moving forward. Focus on your own healing and growth. 7. Seek support. Forgiving someone who has hurt you can be a difficult process, and it's important to have support from friends, family, or a therapist. Surround yourself with positive people who can offer you encouragement and support as you work through your emotions. 3. Mindfulness. Practicing mindfulness can help you stay present and aware of your thoughts and emotions, without getting caught up in them. This can help you avoid dwelling on negative experiences or ruminating on past hurts. 1. Start with the basics. Mindfulness is simply the practice of being present in the moment without judgment. Start by focusing on your breath, and try to become aware of your thoughts and sensations without reacting to them. 2. Practice regularly. Mindfulness is a skill that can be developed with practice. Start with just a few minutes a day and gradually increase the amount of time you spend in mindfulness meditation. 3. Let go of judgment. One of the key aspects of mindfulness is letting go of judgment. Try to observe your thoughts and emotions without labeling them as good or bad. 4. Cultivate self-compassion. Mindfulness can bring up difficult emotions, so it's important to be kind and compassionate to yourself as you practice. Treat yourself with the same kindness and compassion you would offer to a good friend. 5. Practice in different settings. Mindfulness can be practiced anywhere, so try to incorporate it into your daily life. You can practice while walking, eating, or even doing household chores. 6. Seek out guidance. If you're new to mindfulness, consider seeking out guidance from a teacher or joining a mindfulness group. They can offer support and guidance as you develop your practice. 7. Be patient. Mindfulness is a journey, not a destination. Be patient with yourself as you develop your practice and remember that it's okay to have difficult days. Just keep showing up and practicing. 4. Meditation. Meditation is a great way to quiet your mind and gain clarity on your thoughts and emotions. By taking a few minutes each day to meditate, you can learn to let go of negative thoughts and emotions and focus on the present moment. 1. Find a quiet space. Find a quiet, peaceful space where you can sit comfortably and won't be interrupted. This could be a dedicated meditation room, a corner of your bedroom, or even a quiet spot in nature. 2. Set a regular schedule. Set aside a regular time each day to meditate. This will help you to establish a consistent practice and make it easier to stick with. 3. Get comfortable. Sit in a comfortable position with your back straight, your hands resting in your lap, and your eyes closed or focused on a single point. 4. Focus on your breath. Bring your attention to your breath and focus on the sensation of each inhale and exhale. If your mind wanders, simply acknowledge the thought and gently bring your focus back to your breath. 5. Use a mantra. Some people find it helpful to use a mantra, or a repeated phrase or word, to help focus their attention during meditation. 6. Practice mindfulness. Use your meditation practice as an opportunity to practice mindfulness by observing your thoughts and emotions without judgment. 6. Be patient. Meditation is a skill that takes time and practice to develop. Be patient with yourself and don't get discouraged if your mind wanders or you find it difficult to sit still at first. 7. Seek guidance. If you're new to meditation or struggling with your practice, consider seeking out guidance from a teacher or attending a meditation group. They can offer support and guidance as you develop your practice. V. Gratitude. Focusing on what you're grateful for can help shift your perspective and bring more positivity into your life. Make a daily practice of listing things you're thankful for, no matter how small they may seem. Practicing gratitude is the act of intentionally focusing on the positive things in your life and being thankful for them. Here are some tips on how to practice gratitude. 1. Keep a gratitude journal, write down things you are grateful for each day. This helps to train your mind to focus on the positive and can improve your overall mood. 2. 
Say thank you, express gratitude to those around you. Say thank you to your family and friends, co-workers, and even strangers who have helped you in some way. 3. Practice mindfulness. Take a few minutes each day to focus on the present moment and appreciate the small things in life. This could be the warmth of the sun on your skin or the taste of your favorite food. 4. Look for the silver lining. When faced with challenges or setbacks, try to find the positive aspects or lessons learned from the experience. 5. Practice empathy. Think about the people in your life who have made a positive impact on you. Reflect on the ways they have helped you and express gratitude towards them. 6. Count your blessings. Take a moment each day to reflect on the good things in your life, no matter how small they may seem. This can include having a roof over your head, food to eat, or a supportive friend. 7. Pay it forward. When you receive kindness or help from others, consider paying it forward by doing something kind for someone else. This can help spread positivity and gratitude. Remember, practicing gratitude is a daily habit that takes time and effort. But with consistent practice, you can cultivate a more positive and thankful outlook on life. Letting go is a process, and it may not happen overnight. But by practicing these methods and being patient with yourself, you can improve your mental health and find more peace in your life. Now back to my story. As I let go of my attachment to certain outcomes, I felt a sense of peace and contentment that I'd never experienced before. I began to appreciate the small moments in life, like a beautiful sunset, or a heartfelt conversation with a friend. Over time, I noticed that my career began to shift in unexpected ways. I received opportunities that I never could have imagined, and felt like I was making a real difference in the world. I realized that by letting go of my attachment to specific outcomes, I was able to open herself up to even greater possibilities. I continued to study Hawkins' teachings and incorporate them into my daily life. I found that letting go was a powerful tool for achieving spiritual growth and finding true happiness.